Hello, Jamie from Fuel Motor here today. I just want to discuss a little bit about a very common topic that we get, a lot of phone calls and emails, and that is about dyno charts, specifically how to read and interpret a dyno chart. And in this example, this is a dyno chart from a Dynojet chassis dyno, uh, 250i, with a Harley Davidson Road King on here. This is a before and after dyno chart. So this is actually two runs on here. And we're going to talk a little bit about the dyno numbers, the curves, and uh, a little bit about what everything means. So um, I guess the easy, the easy explanation to start is this is a before, be the blue trace. The after is the red trace. So this 20, 2021 Harley Road King, uh, what we did to this bike is we put a, put a camshaft and uh, a couple other parts on it, and we tuned this thing before and after. Now this dyno chart is going to be a good representation of it doesn't really matter if it's a motorcycle or car or anything else on a, on a chassis dyno or how, how to read this chart. So the first thing you're going to see here is going to be the max power. That's max, that's horsepower and the max torque. So the before power was 80 horsepower, the after was 117, the before torque was 110, and the after was 127. And that's again going to be representative in these in these traces here between the blue and the red. And I'll go over each of these number values, first what they are, and then I'll go back to it and explain what they actually mean or what the variance of differences are. So on the X axis is gonna be the engine RPM. And as you can see, it starts out at 2000 RPMs and goes up to 6,500. And on the y-axis you're going to have horsepower on the left and torque on the right so again on this first trace you can see where it made that 80 horsepower and then the 110 torque you can just follow those lines and then go over to the appropriate axis on there on the after this one made 117 picked up quite a bit of horsepower and made 127 on the torque and you can see on the left and right axis, this is a really easy to chart to interpret because both of these on that axis are the same, the, the torque and the horsepower. So that makes it really easy. Uh, one really important aspect to, to understand and remember is you can see here on the second, uh, the second line here, this uh, horsepower and torque would be the after on the red. Uh, the horsepower and torque intersect at 5252 RPMs. Uh, that's because horsepower equals torque times horsepower, torque times RPM divided by 5252. Doesn't matter if you have a weed eater or a top fuel dragster, every engine is going to intersect at 5252 because that's the equation. Again, that's horsepower equals torque times RPM divided by 5252. That's going to, once you know torque, you always can get horsepower from it and actually vice versa if you just inverse that equation. So, Getting onto the numbers here, uh, it's really important when viewing dyno charts, especially if you're if you're viewing charts like online on internet forums or website or Facebook or whatever, is to have the conditions. I know a lot of people don't don't uh, have the conditions on their dyno charts, and uh, a lot of things are different one one shot to the next. And we can get into that in a different video or what, and some of the variances. And I'll discuss that a little bit here. But but you really need to to get a good picture of what's going on. You really need to have the conditions, and that's going to be here. On, on this box here, the conditions, because otherwise you're just kind of guessing at what the conditions are where that day, whether you don't really know whether you had had the air that, that you have at like sea level in Daytona or what you have up in Denver at altitude. So uh, the conditions are really going to help that. And that definitely plays a huge part in the numbers on the dyno sheet and engine output for sure, way more so. So the first the first part of the conditions here you're going to see is the temperature. That's the, that's the ambient temperature in the dyno room on there. Uh, you can see uh, in this top one here, it's 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, that that temperature is derived from a, a temp sensor right on the dyno stack. So that's going to change. It's really important to have good to good good airflow and good good conditions in the room because that'll obviously affect the engine output and tune and everything else. So, uh, but that number is a, a fixed number that comes off of the stack on the dyno. The second number is going to be the air pressure. Um, in, in this example. It's in kilopascals, uh, it, depending on the configurations set up on each dyno, it could be in inches of mercury too. 
Um, but this one here had uh, 98.7, which is uh, not too bad, not real great. That's that's definitely a little lower pressure and we like to see in perfect conditions. Uh, the, hum the next one's humidity, 38% for Wisconsin. This this was probably done here um, in the mid midsummer when we have a little more humidity. Fortunately, where we're at, we have we have really good conditions for tuning for sure. So normally we see that can the humidity a little bit lower. Uh, the next is going to be the correction factor. This is a really big one. And um, you'll see this, this will be typically be SAE, STD, or, you know, actual, we'll get back to that. And then again, the max horsepower and the max torque. So getting back to these, the numbers here and the conditions and why it's so important is the first is the temperature. You know, you try to keep the the relative temperature in the dining room under control best you can. We have a, a really sophisticated makeup air. Um, it, it draws air from outside and depending on what the air the air is doing or what it is, it'll either, depending on the settings and and um, configurations we put in our dyno room in the in the test cell, we can we can try to, you know, we try to keep that within about five degrees above ambient um, in, in the within five degrees in the summer and our, ours either will will mix outside air with with inside air that's that's already cooled and pull it in the air or pull it in the room rather and in like our dyno has three sets of fans that do all the hard work but we try to keep that you know it tuning we like to be in that you know typically 80 degree range is, is really a good spot for tuning because that's a lot of the conditions where engines are run you start getting too far you know up or down from from the normal running conditions where you're going to run these motors and run the stuff and you know that really starts setting the correction factor and some of the other stuff off, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But um, you know, you start you start getting to the low window where the dyno can run. I, I believe it's forty degrees, and you get down there, and you're going to start really playing with the correction factors. And same same as you get the dyno rooms over 100, 100 degrees much too. That that'll you know throw the numbers the other way. So we try to keep the the numbers as consistent as possible. But for this uh, for this video, we're just going to keep it, keep on what the numbers actually mean. So. Um, the next is going to be the air pressure in the room. That's that's basically what what the, uh, the air pressure is outside. It's, it's relative. So um, whatever whatever your barrel reading is, that's that's read again right off the dyno stack. Um, it, it's right in the right in, right in the computer hardware there. Um, that's going to read your your uh, relative air pressure. And again, that can either be in kilopascals or it can be. I mean, it's all in the configuration. And this is just how it's displayed on the dyno. On the dyno sheet, so it can be a kilopascals, could be inches of mercury, could could be in bar. I mean, whatever way the 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 dyno user um, is, you know, likes to interpret it from for their personal way they do it. But um, the humidity again, that one is also taken from the weather station built into the dyno stack, and uh, you can see here we had the before was forty five, uh, in the end was thirty eight. Um, we typically would do these bikes, we'll do the base runs in the morning. And uh, there was probably a little dew on the ground yet when we did this one in the afternoon, it dries out a bit. So, um, and then this, this, this one here, the, this is very important, the correction factor. And I'll talk a little bit about correction factors here and I'll try not to get too far off subject because I can do a video on, on that in itself is the most common and what we would consider the industry standard. And this would be what uh, DinoJet considers the standard. And this is what they teach in their curriculum and courses and such would be SAE. Um, most of the manufacturers you see that, that share charts are um, they're in SAE format, um, and basically what that is 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 it's a set of standards. Anytime we're talking about correction factor, it means that there's a set of standards that the data is corrected to. So um, the most popular is SAE um, or STD. Uh, STD is another one where uh, it's just a, a different standard that it's corrected to. Um, so if you have a chart that's that's configured in STD, no harm, no foul. Your numbers are going to be a little higher. Uh, the main thing is. The actual, the actual differences, I believe, are the SAE SAE standard is set to like um, just under 2,000 feet of density altitude, where the STD is about 65 or 70 uh, above sea level. And then the temperature standards are SAE is 77 versus, I know, 60 degrees versus STD. So, so the STD numbers are just set to a better air standard and, you know, better relative air pressure. So them numbers are going to be a little higher and it depends too how far how far one way or another that that correction factor is and what the numbers are away from from those conditions and and how how they affect the overall numbers so 
So if you have a, for example, if you have a bike that's, that's in, um, SAE, say, say it makes a hundred horsepower, you typically are going to add, you know, two to 4% to that number for STD, same for, same for torque. Um, it all depends on, again, where the numbers land and such and the actual conditions versus the correction. But typically it's about two to 4% higher on, on the STD charts. So, I mean, no harm, no foul. It's just the way that the dyno operator wanted to express that chart for that given intended purpose. So that's the, the, the main difference between there. We, we choose S, SAE just because that's, again, what all the manufacturers primarily like to use and and that's we just find it's a real consistent this is consistent thing so now on this correction factor uh you can see this chart here is sae and you're going to see 1.03 for both of those runs what that means is there was a three percent multiplier applied to the correction factor so so the the actual numbers this engine laid down would have been corrected by three percent so the actual numbers they had would have been you know one 114 or so on the horsepower after but it corrected it with by applying the SAE correction to 117. So this 1.03 that represents a positive correction. Now if you get into there's a couple situations where you're going to see um, some of the shops say say you have a shop in Denver or you know Utah where you're at some serious altitude now you might see on one of those charts it might be is you know it could be you know, 1.14, one you know, 1.17, it all depends. There could be as much as 17, 20% correction because at that altitude, you don't have the air pressure and conditions, so it corrects it back. And the reason we do this is because uh, Dino Jet Dino wants to remain as as uh, consistent as possible depending on your location, you know, whether you're at, at sea level or whether you're at, you know, at, at the uh, at mountain range. So what that represents that you know when you're into that you, you see down at dyno and you very well could have you know up at, at uh, utah or denver you could have the same 117 127 number here you know but the correction factor you're going to see there's going to be like a sae 1.17 or 1.20 just because it's it adding that 20 percent that you lost back into there um and on the other hand, if you are in very good conditions, like a great example is here in Wisconsin. I mean, it is no lie. We get we get fantastic conditions everywhere now from fall through winter into spring where we get really good air. Uh, we have a really good dyno in our current facility here. Both of our dynos have have really sophisticated makeup air and and um, systems to keep all the numbers very, very consistent throughout the year. But in the winter, it's really nice because our dyno takes our our, main, our primary dyno takes air right from outside in the room, and, and it takes it from outside and puts it in the room. And you know whether it has to heat it or cool it on the way in, that it, it takes care of that for us. So in in say the middle of winter here, where it might be well below zero, we we're still taking that dense air and bringing it in the dyno room, heating it, and and it's still very dense. So it's not uncommon for in the winter here for us to see a positive or excuse me a negative correction on this SAE number it might say point point nine six or point you know nine five or point nine eight which means that the actual output of that engine was actually higher than what the dyno chart is because because the conditions that at that minute when we did the dyno run were actually better than the relative conditions of the correction factor so that's a, a pretty neat thing just you really want to keep an eye on that, on that, uh, on that correction factor here, and um, kind of, kind of keep a look at it. And the same goes with the 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 temp and the pressure and humidity. Um, you know, there's there's definitely games people can play with the with the temps, the humidity, and and again that'll play into this correction factor because if 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 for some reason you were able to get this temperature up higher, get the humidity up fire up higher. The correction factor and the dyno is going to do the math to calculate it to a different correction. So, you know, there's some, you know, if, if you have your bike done at a, at a, at a dyno shop and it's, you know, 85 degrees outside and, and you have no humidity and you're at sea level, you know, you're, you look at your corrections on your sheet and it comes back to 100 and 109 degrees with, with 96 kilopascals and, you know, 60% humidity 
and you're going to have a crazy correction factor of 1.08 or something like that, you're going to know that somebody is is playing with the playing with the stack on the dyno, and they're 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 in a way to modify or do that. But we've heard all kinds of crazy stories of people trying to do things and getting their rooms hot and things like that. But I mean, for the most part, ask your ask your tuner, engine builder, whoever is doing your work for you to put the put the conditions on the on the sheet because it's really nice to have that stuff there, especially if you're out comparing dial charts from different sources and things like that. And again, we have a, we have a complete article on a lot of the differences, variances and, and things that can be different from one dyno sheet um, in one shop to another, because there's a, there's a huge difference in, in, in things that can be different in even, not even just the hardware and software, but the test procedures and the bikes, the way they're doing the dyno runs, there's, and it all makes a big difference. And especially you start stacking all that stuff on top of each other, you know, you can really start talking some serious 10, 20% differences. And I mean, we haven't even talked about the tune yet. So that's a whole nother, another story there. But uh, uh, one other thing to look at here is uh, on the upper right-hand corner, you're going to see the correction factor. That means the CF. Uh, this one again is an SAE, but there's a smoothing after that. So by default, the Dynojet Dino exports the graph as a five, and that's going to be a, a relatively smooth out graph. And you can see this this tire or this excuse me this this uh, this graph here had probably a little bit of um, tire bouncing, maybe out of balance just a little bit, but it's not real bad. It's pretty smooth. A couple of a couple of um, squiggles in the graph there, but it's probably is real good. You know, um, if you change that to a four, three, two, or one, or even zero. It's going to be a crazy, you know, it'll be real jagged looking, but you'll be able to spot that. We used to see over the years, some people do that to raise the numbers up because it'll kind of put spikes in it and but kind of make sure that's at five. That's that's really important. So um, that's that's a, a big thing there. Um, it's always good to to um, to view the again, the resolution. There's there's different people if they don't have the, the chart laid out right. Make sure they cross at 52, 52. That's important. You can see on the on the base run, it never crossed the 52 because this motor um, had a, a Screaming Eagle tune that has a speed limiter in it. So this this was not able to go past, you know, 50, you know, about 5,000 RPMs. It looked like the motor shut it down in, in the gear it was ran in because of a factory speed limiter. Um, the second tune here didn't have any limiter at all in the motor there. So that makes it kind of difficult because, you know, to, to get a, a run all the way in, you'd, you'd probably have to use third gear. And, and then we're talking different you know, again, we'll have a, another video and talk about some of these other differences between charts and things um, because you start changing, the, you know, the parasitic loss and, and things like that. That really starts changing the numbers based on gear, things like that. But this chart, this video is really about explaining what the numbers mean in each chart. Um, the other other thing to look at, you're going to see some dyno charts have have more of a rectangle look to them. And sometimes they use that to make the appearance for uh, sometimes they do it to make the appearance to make the look the chart look flatter than it really is. This this chart here is actually the default that the software um, spits it out in. So uh, this is generally this is a good example. The on the on the on the vertical columns here, you can see that it's in twenty increments. Uh, same with the horsepower and torque. Sometimes you're going to see charts that are done in like like 40 or 50 increments, you can actually, if you go in the software, you can change that resolution. And again, that's another thing that's really going to make the chart look a lot flatter. And, and especially the torque line, everybody wants that flat torque line. So they will do that to make it look flatter. But um, again, this isn't to criticize any anything there, but just, you know, that's that's what we look for on these. And again, the biggest thing we prefer is, is the SAE correction factor. If Again, if you had a, your, your chart says STD, no big deal. Just just either you know pull two to four percent off that, or just simply ask your ask your dyno guy to hey, can I have that chart in SAE? Because it's it's just simply a mouse click in the software they can get to. So this was just a, a overview of of the numbers and how to read the dyno chart. If you have any other questions, you are welcome to contact us. Uh, the easiest is through our web, website fuelmotousa.com, and be sure to visit the Fuel Moto University. That is on our homepage. Click on the banner there, and that takes you to all our tech articles. And I thank you, and have a great day.